Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. To cover the occasion of the release of the Charlie's Angels movie in 2019, which comes out today, this review covers the Charlie's Angels van. It's a 125 scale kit from Marvell, number H1397, which was released back in 1977 following the debut of the 1976 television show of the same name. Now, to my knowledge, this van never appeared in any of the TV shows and was simply used uh, for publicity to um, springboard off the popularity of the show by Ravel. But it did, in fact, uh, make them come to realize that they could get even more mileage if they were to um, commission a full-size van, which they did, uh, which toured the country for a few years after the release of the popular show. This kit was never re-released. It's out of production, of course, but they're still available online at fairly reasonable prices for a collector's item. I consider it an icon of modeling, and I was proud to build this one, so if you find one, don't set it on the shelf. Go ahead and build it. You can make a gorgeous uh, display out of this kit, and it is ripe for detailing. I didn't do too much with it, so as you can see, right out of the box, it looks pretty nice. I did have to recreate the decals because mine were shot. So I borrowed someone's and just reprinted them on a color printer, uh, sprayed them with some clear coat on some decal paper, and applied them uh, just as they are. So they're not exactly uh, duplicates, but they look pretty good. All in all, this is a really great looking kit, and you can build it if you can find one. Here you see the layout, and there's about uh, 90 pieces to this kit molded in uh, black vinyl, pink vinyl, and some smoke-colored glass. You won't find an open box review of this kit on any of the major uh, reviewers because they can't sell you one. And that's their whole purpose for being. But I'll show you how to build this kit. And it's a really nice kit to put together. You will love it. Uh, it is ripe for detailing, as I mentioned. And here are the uh, four decals that are available for the kit. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, simply the uh, side uh, decals and a couple of license plates. Now, as I mentioned, it came out in uh, 77, but the uh, copyright here uh, shows that it was uh, designed in 1976. For the most part, we'll be using um, liquid uh, cement for construction and sometimes actually tube glue for parts that need to set into position, occasionally some super glue for strength, like uh, on suspension pieces, and we'll also be using some clear, crystal clear glue for uh, the windows. Construction starts with the engine, so grab these pieces out of the kit, and we'll go ahead and put the block halves together, and then add the um, the top half there, the manifold, and uh, then we'll continue on with uh, some detailing. It's a simplified engine because the kit has you close the hood um, but we're going to detail the exhaust with some steel color and some rust. Of course the starter is a uh, black semi-gloss and then uh, the manifold is aluminum with um, some Chevy orange heads. The air cleaner fan and all the pulleys and belts are basically black and as well as the distributor. Next we'll assemble the wheel uh, assemblies and that includes the two-piece tires. Back in the day um, they didn't have soft rubber vinyl tires. They simply gave you two halves of styrene. So put those together with some liquid cement and add the inner and outer hubs. Now notice here I have uh, given the uh, inner hubs, the, the wheels there, an aluminum treatment along with uh, some highlighted chrome pen treatment to the trim ring. Next we'll begin assembly on the suspensions and we'll be adding the drivetrain in place. So uh, these are the uh, instructions for you to follow along with. 
Grab these suspension pieces out of the kit, including the frame, uh, as they will be mounted to that. And uh, also note that the um, uh, coil springs there were from the black sprue. So go ahead and get these pieces out. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is add the uh, rear pumpkin, and that uh, goes simply into place its positive locations. So glue that in there with some strong uh, cement, and then uh, we're going to, uh, you, as you can see here, that's applied to uh, the positive receivers that are available on the frame. I used a silver sharpie to uh, emphasize the coil springs there. They're usually a steel color around the uh, coil springs that will go into the front suspension. I painted all the shock absorbers a gloss white and then uh, in the front end here as you can see I uh, taped those up so that they won't get sprayed with the black for the frame. In the front end we're going to um, use some slow setting glue to set the um, uh, springs and the shocks and the axle pins into place. Here's another diagram of the front end. You can see uh, that the springs have also been covered with some uh, easy to remove tape and the white arrows indicate the uh, axle pins. Now you need to put those into place before we add the uh, lower suspension arms here as you can see because they trap everything into position and you couldn't get them in there later on. Also note uh, that the ends of the uh, uh, axle pins have been covered to uh, permit them to have some nice gluing surface and raw plastic for later on. Next we'll move on to the next phase of construction which includes the firewall, the dashboard and column and some of the seats and um, some of the interior appointments. Before we can do that, we need to paint the frame, uh, the floor pan, and the firewall a semi-gloss black. Once the pieces have dried, uh, we're going to need to stage these parts uh, for the next portion of assembly. That includes, of course, the drivetrain, the wheels, the rear axle, and uh, the engine in place, which goes on the mounts. Now, uh, you can see here the red circles indicate where the engine will be placed and it's upside down there and you can see the locations with the white arrows uh, where those will be placed so use some strong glue and put that into position. Now we can add the shocks uh, to the rear end and also the rear wheels um, as they will um, um, help us mock up the rest of uh, some of the body etc. And as you can see here the uh, rolling chassis is uh, all set up. The wheels are in place and the engine is in position along with the uh, drive shaft. And now we'll work on the floor pan. As you remember it was painted semi-gloss black. Uh, but then we're going to um, add some masking uh, to the top side to uh, keep um, some of the overspray from underneath uh, from uh, deteriorating that surface. Now we're going to spray uh, spray the um, the engine cover and I use some Krylon uh, paint called Candy Raz number 3934 for that. Uh, it's a really nice looking color and uh, it comes out uh, looking very good. Then we will detail the rest of the interior with a, a metallic gray paint uh, as a base coat uh, before we put the embossing powder on. Now I mixed some uh, light gray with some burgundy and yes you can do that it's permitted and then I applied some spray glue and uh, put the uh, floor into place with the embossing powder mix. With the top side drying I scraped off some of the uh, paint in order to glue the uh, chassis to the floor pan and as you can see here it's cleared and ready to go. And then we're going to uh, use some good strong glue and clamp that into position with some uh, small clamps. All right, turning things over to the top side, we're going to add the pedal uh, assembly there to the firewall and the firewall itself against the front of the um, engine cover there. 
Uh, dashboard was painted with the body color uh, and then given a treatment of uh, flat so that it uh, looks like the material that a dash would be made of. Also, um, I added some uh, some gauge decals here and uh, from the spare parts decals box and uh, also uh, the additional um, sports package with the tachometer sticking up there. You know, I added some uh, just some regular photo etch type circles and diameters. You really want to give it a little bit of um, presence so that it uh, appears like a real dash and I used a silver pencil on some of the gauges there on the instrument panel. Now note also the um, CB radio, uh, it, there's no real positive place to put it. I rounded it off the back side and uh, used some super glue to put it into position. The uh, microphone attaches there on the left of the CB unit. When that's all said and done, uh, you put the dashboard into place and it actually looks pretty intriguing um, with all the uh, availability of detailing uh, that you could do. Now we're going to assemble the uh, a steering wheel to the column. Uh, I painted the uh, shafts a uh, aluminum, bright aluminum and the ends black. And note that the end of the um, steering box there will uh, mount to a um, depression in the front end of the frame. And of course uh, you will be putting the uh, steering shaft through the firewall and into the end there that you see the, with the red arrow. Uh, but go ahead and scrape off the paint to get a good glue bond and use some super glue to uh, apply these into position. Run the, um, the steering column through the hole there and then into the receiver on the steering box that's mounted to the frame. And notice that I drilled out the holes on the uh, sport wheel um, and also added some uh, uh, chrome pen to that for uh, detailing. Before the ubiquitous cup holders found their way into the manufacturer's vehicles, this is what was used, especially in vans. Typically they were either just wood uh, or they were painted uh, flat black. But uh, go ahead and assemble that part and we'll install that with the interior next. For the rest of the interior, um, the seats were painted with the candy raz color and the seat risers uh, were um, um, uh, applied with the uh, um, embossing powders. And on the left there, lower left, you can see the, um, the drink tray and cup holders uh, were painted with a semi-gloss black. I used some epoxy glue to uh, glue the seat risers into place after scratching off a bit of that embossing powder and attached the seats on top of those with some liquid cement. And as you can see, she's coming together on the interior. Next step of the uh, instructions has us working on the interior panels and some of the glass. Uh, so we'll work on those next. Uh, but you'll notice that the body is in involved in this and so we're going to have to prep some of the body pieces before we can do that. And as you see here, uh, there is some uh, parting lines on both the front quarter uh, and the rear quarter of the vehicle which need some attention. So scrape those off and sand them smooth with progressive grits. And then I noticed there was a couple of sinks on the left quarter panel that needed to be filled and sanded smooth as well. So I went ahead and used some uh, putty for that. You can use your favorite brand. There's also uh, some ejector pin marks on the uh, inside or the lower side of the roof. Uh, so I filled those and sanded that smooth. And what we're working with here are parts that are going to be uh, painted uh, with the body color pink. Now here's a little trick. You can make your um, script work on the body look very realistic by applying some bare metal foil to the script uh, if it's pronounced enough and then um, cutting it really close to the uh, edges of the lettering and then later on you can after you paint scrape it off of the top edges and 
it actually looks uh, pretty um, convincing as chrome script. Uh, so if I were you, I'd give it a try. Body was, uh, you know, prepared and ready for uh, paint. I decided that I would paint the interior a purple color on the upper surfaces on the uh, inside. So I masked the rest of the body off uh, to keep from getting a lot of overspray there. And then I went ahead and sprayed the interior purple. Next, I masked off the interior portions I wanted to preserve as purple, uh, including the uh, roof. And then uh, I prepared the rest to paint those uh, pink. And I used a Krylon color, it's a short cut color, called um, Hot Pink, and it was KSCS number 039, and I thought it was most appropriate for that magical first year of the Angel Show. Now here I mocked up the uh, grill to put it into position, and then I glued the front uh, lower pan there into position to make for a nice... Uh, a nice body. I also did the same thing with the uh, lower pan in the back uh, of the vehicle. I glued that into shape uh, too. Now I painted the uh, inside of the hood, that's the underside of the hood, with the hot pink color uh, because I wanted to put that into place and spray the entire body all at one time. I also painted the um, divan or, or settee there that goes into the van and taped off the top uh, because I'm going to apply something different to that. Along with the pieces that you've seen I also painted the uh, roof, the top of the roof of course and the dash uh, panel and also um, an instrument and gauge cluster that goes inside uh, for controls inside the van. Now it's time to apply those uh, decals. There's only four, and really only two of them that go on the body. Um, they're very large, however, and they'll need plenty of warm water to position them. But uh, you can see them here in place, um, and just use um, some setting solutions once you get those into position uh, that are on the milder, milder side so that they don't wrinkle. And then uh, just blot them out and make sure that they're nice and smooth and put them into place and let those dry overnight. We'll continue with the interior now, uh, uh, the windshield and uh, some of the bubble windows and also the interior panels, which are going to take uh, some detailing. You see the windshield here and um, I added some uh, black uh, Sharpie um, stripes. Uh, where you would find some uh, trim on the edge windows. So here are the rest of the pieces that we'll be working with uh, in this section. And uh, we've got the door panels and the uh, padded uh, uh, sat uh, satin panels that are go on the inside. And also some of the windows, which uh, in this case, the, um, the bubble windows had some black swirls in them uh, from... Um, you know, some of the coloring that didn't uh, quite mix well in the uh, molds. And also the uh, little um, side bubble windows and the windshield. The satin interior was uh, added to the in, uh, inside of the rear doors here. And I used some uh, bracing and some clamps to uh, keep those into position until the glue dried. Once the interior panels are done, you can add the bubble windows here. You can see the tint uh, is evident. And also note down at the bottom there the uh, script that we used, you know, and removed some of the paint off the top. Uh, looks pretty good. I used a wide Sharpie to add uh, some of the rubber trim gasket there around the window and installed the window using some crystal clear uh, from Micro to uh, put that into place. The interior panels are going to take three separate maskings um, as you can see here and then the first thing we're going to do is hand paint the um, the television um, entertainment center there a flat black and then we're going to paint the um, extreme areas there with um, some of the f uh, dark purple um, and uh, finally we'll paint the um, uh, soft panels and the upholstery with some of that candy razz. 
scrape off some of the paint on the back side and we're going to add the interior upholstery sections to the side walls. Um, they butt up to the back end there. You can see the um, purple that is uh, provided for the upper sections and the rear there. And then also it goes right up to the a window line there there's a crease there and just push that all up into position along that line I detailed the television cabinet uh, by using some metallic gray around the um, uh, trim there inside the television and some chrome knobs also a little um, wood faux look on the uh, cabinet door that generally would house uh, your tapes and uh, infra and things that you would use uh, for your television. And now we'll move on to adding uh, the um, some of the front end pieces, the roof, and some of the interior structure along with the side pipes. So go ahead and grab the hood and some of the lenses for the front end uh, as well as the radiator and the front end grill portions. Take notice of the tabs and the uh, notches there in the radiator that are applied uh, to install the uh, radiator to the back side of the grill. Use the chrome pen to highlight the headlight bezels and I use some chrome foil to uh, go over the uh, small turn signal lenses below that. Now install the grill into place. Uh, put it in from the back side and um, angle it up towards the top, snap it into the little grooves and receivers at the bottom and then push it back towards the hood and glue it into place. Next we'll add the body to the uh, lower section uh, chassis and the frame and we're going to look for some locating points uh, and so turn the unit over and look uh, for position spots that you see here with the white arrows uh, up front the frame uh, attaches to the bottom side of the radiator and that's a good point to uh, lock uh, the position in there also along the side and the back uh, and I use some epoxy glue to make sure that those are locked into place and are nice and uh, symmetrical before everything settles um, you see the black arrows here they indicate that the uh, floor pan uh, is resting exactly horizontal along the plane of the back uh, uh, panel there. So make sure that that fits. Also note that the floor uh, comes right up to the bottom of the television unit and uh, that's how you'll know it's in the correct position. Now we'll move on to installing the uh, the roof into position in the windows there and the bubble windows and also the side pipes uh, which were uh, treated to some flat black uh, middle sections and also some uh, molotov chrome pen uh, treatment on the ends. This is how I detailed the control panel that's found uh, inside the interior on the roof uh, at the front edge there. Um, I added some uh, flat black for the speakers on the ends and there's a couple of lights there that I painted with some uh, silver chrome pen and then of course just uh, some sharpie marks for some of the control knobs. There were some notches up there at the top where the white arrow is. Uh, just clean the uh, paint off of there and glue that control panel into position. Note the yellow arrows too. Um, the settee unit there just butts up to the back and against the left sidewall. Scrape some paint off there and glue it into position. The uh, instructions give the option of just placing the roof into position, which I chose, but you can also glue it into position, and um, uh, that's your choice. Decide which you'd like to do. I will add some of the um, extra pieces to the kit. Um, the side pipes have already been installed, as you saw. Um, we're going to work on the uh, rear end first and then the front end. I gotta say I love the rake on this and uh, of course the bigs and littles help with that but as you can see uh, the bottom of the vehicle here is quite an incline between the front and the back and it looks like it's ready to go fast and forward and uh, uh, get into the action. I covered the tail light bezels with some uh, bare metal foil then painted some uh, 
clear red on the top section turn signal and some thin white for the backup lights below that. You should note that the plastic in kits that are 43 years old is typically very brittle. Uh, when I pulled the rear bumper out, I noticed that um, one of the um, uh, pieces was missing uh, for the mounts. So I used some 25 thousandths rod and went ahead and drilled a hole there and glued it in with super glue to provide a new mount. I trimmed it off, painted it black, and it's good as new. The repairs and installations completed, um, we can go ahead and install these pieces to the back end. Some of these pieces and for mocking up parts, I use a product called Quakehold. Um, you can find it on the internet. Uh, it's a, um, a putty that's kind of sticky, but it doesn't leave a residue. So you can mount things like hoods and doors and things into position without having to glue them into place. So go ahead and uh, glue the taillights into position along with the rear uh, bumper bar there. And uh, also I use a little of that quake hold to put the uh, rear doors into position. Um, the instructions say you can uh, glue them into place either open or closed. But I decided with a little bit of uh, my uh, sticky putty here that I could put them anywhere I wanted. The side view mirrors are next and uh, the antenna there are very fragile. Be very careful handling those. So I decided uh, to use a little bit of the bare metal foil to go ahead and apply that to the mirror surfaces. And there's a nice uh, natural indent there. So just uh, um, stick that into place and tamp it down, uh, burnish it a little bit, and then trim off the excess uh, in that crease and then you've got yourself a nice looking rear view mirror. As I mentioned, some of the plastic is very brittle. As soon as I removed the CB antenna from the sprue, the antenna broke off at the base. So I used a pin vise to drill an appropriate hole and some 30 thousandths um, styrene rod to replace it. I then just added a little dab of glue up at the top and replaced the antenna and Quite frankly, it's probably more close to scale. So if something's broken, just try and fix it. I used a little bit of the chrome pen for the spring at the base. Now use some super glue to go ahead and install the in, uh, rear view mirrors and the uh, CB antenna into place. Uh, there's some nice receivers there. Just make sure that you remove some of the uh, paint inside the holes uh, so that they have a good bond. Well, there you have it. This great looking kit is pretty easy to build. Everything fit very well. The body was pretty square uh, and uh, the frame and the floor pan were very flat and straight. Uh, but it will take a little bit of detailing. And what better way to uh, celebrate the release of the new Charlie's Angels movie. Now you can bet that um, it probably won't um, reach the popularity and magic of that first year of the show but still uh, it'll be entertaining. So if I were you I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. We hope you like this premium scale model kit review so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the icon in the lower right hand of any of our reviews. And you can find us on Facebook or at our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.